I really love how you co-parent and you have been a major beacon of just how it can be done because no parent on earth probably signs up to have kids and then wants to, you know, have the plan change. How did you know to do this in this way? I mean, you literally gave a euphemism for divorce that makes us all feel like we're saying it with a, a flair of dignity and hope. Thank you. How did you take something broken and fix it? <laughs> I mean, it's so interesting because like in a way, my divorce and my relationship with Chris now is like better than our marriage was. So I do think that it can be done. I think, you know, there needs, I, I was, I was really lucky because I had a doctor who kind of gave us a rubric for how to do it. And luckily he's writing a book and I think it's coming out next year. Thank goodness. Um, and because it really kind of lays out the tenets of how you do it. And it's a little bit unsurprising, right? It's like, you have to have radical accountability. You have to know that every relationship is 50, 50, no matter what you think, how you think you were wronged or, you know, how bad you perceive the other person's actions or whatever the case may be. If you are brave enough to take responsibility for your half and really look at your own garbage and your own trauma and how it's presenting in the world and in your relationship, then there's really somewhere to go and something to learn and something to heal. And then also you're also you're holding the other person in the sphere of humanity. Like we're all part good and part bad. It's not binary. We're all gray area. We all are trying our best. And I really wanted my kids to not be traumatized if it were possible. Chris and I committed to putting them first and that's harder than it looks because some days you really don't want to be with the person that you're getting divorced from. But if you're committed to having family dinner, then you do it and you take a deep breath and you look the person in the eye and you remember your pact and you smile and you hug and you make a joke and you just recommit to this new relationship that you are trying to foster. None of us want to get it wrong for our kids, but just yeah. because of what happened in the marriage is not about the parenting. This is about their relationship with their dad and their mom, not about their relationship with your marriage. You know, you said it, it's like you're ending a marriage, but you're still in a family. Like that's, how it will be forever. Some days it's not as good as it looks, you know, <laughs> like we also have good days and bad days, but I think it's driving towards the same purpose of unity and, and love and really what's best for them. And we have this idea that just because we break up, we can't love the things about the person anymore that we loved. And that's not true. And I've always seen you from afar and wished to know you. And then it was like, finally, our timing came together. And I just thank God marvel at you. By the way, you are the best planner, the most cool <laughs> friend, the best sense of humor. I die over you. And I would be uh, totally selfish to just love up on you and not get like any insider goop information, not to take a turn tonally, <laughs> but... Is there any exciting news or things you want to tell us so that we may better the outside after we've talked about how we take care of our insides and our hearts? What's the 411? Well, I have been spending, you know, quarantine's been a very interesting time, I think, for all of us. And, you know, obviously it's been pretty horrific in a lot of ways, but I think there has been this wonderful silver lining of this beautiful insularity at home and with our kids and our, the, our loved ones. And, um, but no traveling, no rushing around. So it's sort of time to sit. It's been time to sit with yourself. And um, so I had sort of like recommitted to a few things to feel better, like my meditation practice, which had been so sporadic. 
and um, making sure to move every single day, no matter what, and like trying to be good with hydration and everything. And then, but my one little beauty tip that since I was doing so many Zooms, all I could see was like these brown lines that I was having here. Um, and I'm really lucky because one of my closest friends is a plastic surgeon. His name is Julius and he lives in Chicago. And I'm always asking him like, what, what's the thing coming down the road? And he gave me a teeny drop of this thing called Xeomin, which is a purified wrinkle, anti-wrinkle injection. And I just feel like it was purified. It's like a pure, uniquely purified formula. So I felt like, okay, this is in the wellness world. And it was, it was a Zoom face cure for me. 